Hi and welcome to the Inquendo Guitars workshop and another part in the video series where I'm building my very first single cut guitar model. My name is Daniel and in this episode I'm going to finish the neck I've been working on the last couple of episodes by doing the last bits of the headstock. The last thing I did in the previous episode was gluing on the headstock veneer and off camera I've sanded it flush with the headstock using my spindle sander and I trimmed the axis so I have a nice little groove for the nut to go in. And the next thing I want to do is drill the tuner holes and make the truss rod axis. And then the final thing I need to do with this headstock is of course making the Unquendor inlay. I always find it very hard and very tricky to get the position for the tuner holes just right and I always spend a lot of time in getting them, in getting them absolutely perfect. Uh, what I do is first I stick on my paper template and draw in the strings for this guitar and I use uh, Graftec Tux, uh, Tux XL nuts pre-slotted. So I can use this nut as a guide to get my string spacing. Then I draw in the strings to check if my template is aligned properly. So now I'm going to mark this with an awl, do the same check on the actual headstock and I'll be back to you to show you a little trick how I drill these holes with a minimum chance of tear out. So I've got my marks made and hopefully it showed up on camera sometimes when I have to really think about what I'm doing I forget about camera positioning and I might have shifted out of focus or even out of frame while checking the positions for the tuner holes. So if you have any questions uh, yeah let me know in the comment section down below and I try to answer them there or maybe this is a nice topic for the Q&A video for the 16th of November. Uh, yeah, time to drill these holes, of course, using the pillar drill. And yeah, to help me drill these holes underneath the pillar drill, I'm going to stick a piece of scrap to the back of the headstock, of course, using masking tape and super glue. And this should give me a nice and level platform um, for underneath the pillar drill. And the added masking tape and the wood to the back of the headstock should also help me to prevent tear out. Of course, I'm also going to use a dedicated 10 mm drill bit. I have a dedicated drill bit to drill the tuner holes, so it, I know it's nice and sharp and should also help me to prevent any tear out to mostly the back of the headstock. So yeah, let me stick this uh, piece of wood to the back of the headstock and drill the holes and I'll see you in a moment. At the moment I'm running my drill press only at a uh, thousand RPM. The great benefit of my drill press is that I can set the RPM really accurate. So only a thousand RPM, relatively low speed. And I think this just gives me uh, yeah, well, more control or gives me the, the best result to just drill at a relatively low speed.
So four or all the six holes are in and as you can see no tear out in the veneer whatsoever. Also very crisp holes in the back, also no tear out whatsoever. So it's a great little trick, no, no matter what you're drilling, if you have to drill all the way through a piece of material, always use a backing. It, it really helps to prevent any tear out. Next on the to-do list is opening up the truss rod axis. Um, I'm going to take my little drill with a very sharp drill bit and I'm going to drill two holes through the veneer of where I know that the truss rod axis is and then I'm going to clean up the edges using chisels, scalpel blades and maybe even my little Dremel tool uh, to get a nice and clean truss rod axis. Yeah, and then the last thing on this headstock is of course the Unquendo Guitars headstock logo. With the thrust rod axis done and uh, all nice and clean, it's now time to do the Unquendor headstock logo. But as you can see, there's very little space to fit in a logo. And that's why I initially thought of doing an engraving into the headstock, directly into the wood. And then do an epoxy uh, fill to have a nice metallic looking logo instead of the aluminum logo. But I did some testing last week. Uh, with engraving and, and filling and, and, and such but the results weren't uh, as pristine and as clean as I was looking for and as I uh, initially hoped for so I had to abandon the idea of doing a very tight engraving uh, and an epoxy fill I'm just not good enough with engraving these very uh, fine details yet so I had to revert back to a technique I do know but of which I thought wasn't possible and that's doing an aluminum inlay like on all my guitars and I didn't think it was possible to cut out such a tiny logo by hand from a stock piece of aluminum but yeah let's take a look at some footage I shot last week while I was practicing cutting out such a tiny logo and yeah and, uh, and eventually I did manage to cut out this tiny logo and after the footage I will be uh, doing the inlay into the headstock.
time to do the actual inlay into the headstock and I'm going to technique I'm going to use a technique I'm always using to do my inlays and that's by positioning the actual inlay on the headstock I made a couple of marks with a pencil and now I have my design also printed out on a piece of paper and I'm going to use some masking tape and some super glue to stick this in place so I can trace it with a fresh scalpel blade and then use little chisels and my Dremel router to make the cavity and I'm going to try and leave as much as the original headstock veneer for in between uh, the letters as possible uh, yeah and after making the cavity I can just stick in uh, the aluminum logo with some super glue fill any gaps with some black limba dust uh, yeah file and sand it flush with the headstock give it a nice little sand and a nice polish and then it should have a nice Unquendor logo in this headstock so fingers crossed and here we go So the headstock logo is in and it all went well. I'm very pleased with how it turned out. There were just a minor spots, the inside of the, le of the small letters uh, mostly, where I couldn't keep the uh, wood veneer. Some pieces broke away by themselves and some of them I had to remove because it was just too small to get the logo in correctly. But luckily I could fill everything up with dust and super glue. And it looks amazing, especially because there's a dark streak uh, in the black limba. I did this on purpose. I have a dark streak running through the logo just to hide the small imperfections uh, that, that I had to be filled up with dust and glue because dust and glue tends to dry a bit darker and it's a good idea to have a, a bit of a darker background where your inlay is so you can hide those minor imperfections. But yeah, I'm pleased with it. I've got a yeah, almost finished neck. Uh, yeah, now it's time to start work on the body. But unfortunately, this is where I have to leave it for this week's episode. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please leave a like. And if you're new to my channel, uh, please consider subscribing to don't miss out on any of my upcoming content. Uh, speaking of upcoming videos, next week will be my one year anniversary here on YouTube. And to celebrate it, I'm going to do a Q&A video for which you can submit your questions in the comment section down below, starting with Q&A, and it can be any question or any topic you would like me to answer in a Q&A video. And I'm very much looking forward to doing that video. Uh, I, have, I wanted to do a Q&A for quite a while now, and yeah, one year anniversary uh, yeah, seemed like uh, the perfect moment to do it. Um, yeah. That's it for this episode. The next guitar building episode will be, of course, starting work on the guitar body to go with this lovely neck. Yeah, I hope to see you all in the next video. But until then, have a nice week.